All right, let's get it going with the color palette here. So right now we've got yellow ochre. We have orange, permanent red, crimson, purple lake, burnt sienna, olive, sky blue, black, gray, and white. And you can add any other color, especially to the truck or the pumpkin, depending on what you want to do. All right, I've got my full inch wash brush flat. I have my half inch flat wash brush and then a quarter inch flat wash brush. I also have a number, it's really, it's a number two round and a number six round, but it's kind of long for a number six round. Anyway, just uh, extra brushes if you need them. Predominantly, I use the other guys. So let's get going on this sky. I'm gonna use a little sky blue, light blue, and just start putting it up on the very top of the canvas in kind of that corner area. And I'm gonna grab from the edge of the paint a nice hunk of white and throw it in there. Just start getting it on those sides. And I love doing the top of the canvas, the bottom of the canvas, and the sides. Do all the edges. Okay, good. And I am not shy with the paint here. I like to get it whiter as I get towards the pumpkins and the truck. If you want to soften, if you've used carbon paper, a lot of times you can still come right up against that edge and you'll be able to see the lines that you've made, which is kind of why I love carbon paper. And just get it nice and tight. Bring it all the way to the ground because when you put in your road, you don't want any left spaces. Okay, good. Let's try to get a little more of that top here. Okay, and just keep it on going. I know it's I know it's a lot, but again, you shouldn't have too many troubles if you use the carbon paper. All right, I'm just going to speed things up and get through this side. And then we'll flip the canvas over and I'll get I'll get this guy on the other side. There we go. Okay, the old flipperoo here. So when in doubt, just use more white, unless you want a dark sky, and you can do dark blue in here. Um, in fact, you could even do an orange sky or yellow sky. I mean, you can really play. But I just love this blue, makes me happy. I'm going to speed this up and get it rolling. Okay, just getting the edges and bringing it down to the road. And remember, it's upside down right now. There we go. And just touch up anything you got. No, that pumpkin's going to be awesome. Woohoo! Done with sky. Okay, we're going to start off with a little bit of brown. I'm using burnt sienna. Now I'm going to turn the canvas over and you can work from the top because really I'm trying to get that bottom edge and I know it's really hard to see. And I'll flip it back over in just a second so you can kind of see where I am. Okay, I'm going to flip back over. There we go. A nice close-up so I'm getting just 
between the tires with that burnt sienna and white so that we can start building that kind of road and it doesn't have to be super even and I wouldn't even make it very velvety as much as it should be an old rocky road and get the sides because the road is going to be on the other side of the tires as well fantastic and then I'm going to move over good Just move it in, play with it if you if you want. So cute. All right, I'm gonna grab black. Don't wash your brush in between this step. If you already have, it's fine. But the paint on the brush will help soften the black and it'll be perfect for the shadow under the truck. And I'm barely... Okay, I'm going to pick up my one inch flat wash brush and start putting in these tires here. So just a beautiful swoopy line. Don't worry about the detail. Don't try to highlight right now. Just get the nice beautiful black lines of the tires in there. It's a very satisfying stroke. I don't know why that is. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to come in and do the inside of the tire. And I leave the tiniest of white lines in between the front of the tire and the inside of the tire. You totally don't have to, but it just helps me to know that later on I need to come back and highlight or something like that. Just let the brush do the work for you. And flat tops because it's up against the bottom side of the truck. And then I'm going to grab gray on my dirty brush and I'm going to start edging in a nice dark bottom line. So partially gray, well it's mostly black I guess. Mostly black, I'm sorry. And just soften that. And then just gently shade that in. And I just like to pull up like that because I think it's super easy. And when I do the chrome right above it, it'll taper that line really nice. Or I should say, kind of chisel it. I just love those black lines against a white canvas. All right, now I'm coming in with that same black and I'm gonna do the shadow for the grill. So that whole thing I love just keeping that chisel on my brush by pulling it out. Try not to stir the paint. Just pull it out and that way you keep a beautiful chisel. Grab a little gray on that black and just pull up and go right next to it. Pull up and you can go horizontally if you want. That's fine. You know, just kind of chisel it in. But I love the amount of paint that'll hold. That brush is just wonderful. Grab a little more and just bring it in. And yes, you can go side to side, but I do like to practice in the shadow layers, uh, kind of what you'll do in the highlight layers. So for me, since the grill bars go up and down, or vertically that's the way I like to do the shadow layer as well and then you can chisel stuff in it's a wonderful thing about these 
flat wash brushes. Good. And remember, if you need to, go ahead and flip the canvas. You know, I just like to hold mine to the side. And that way I can get just a lovely chisel in there. Be gentle on that brush and pull it down and then you can pull that color right on in. And I can tidy up this edge here on the left hand side, good. And you can, yeah, that's great. Remember it's gonna have another top layer of the silver gray kind of metallic-y color. Grab my napkin. I'm just going to wipe my brush off. Don't scrub, just, you know, sweep from side to side. And then grab your gray. Now I'm going to do my rear view mirror in a fairly dark gray, which is why I like to have the black in there because it'll make it darker than the rest which is really fun and then grab a little white to tone it down and you can do the rest of that window do uh, the whole thing and if it ends up being all the same color that's fine we just want a nice base coat in there we can highlight later and using all that white will help give us reflections anyway but just getting a nice sharp bottom line just pull it up use the edge of that paintbrush to your advantage okay Okay, and I can touch up the window later, but I'm going to grab more gray. I'm going to flip my canvas to the side again. And I want to put in my bumper. And I'm just going to use that beautiful brush. So it's got kind of these two sections, right? So I'm doing a darker gray that sort of matches the rear view mirror. So this gray has a little bit of a little bit of a little bit more black in it. Just run that down. And then come on in. Yep, touch that up. Okay, and now let's get a touch of white in to make a lighter brush or a lighter uh, color for that top part of the bumper. And just bring it out. You can chisel it, you can pull it, whatever works. And you don't have to keep it this way. You can always flip it. You can lay it flat on a table, something like that. Just get that bumper in there and then we'll move to the next. And remember, a little lighter than the bottom part of the bumper. All right, now I'm just gonna get a nice chisel. I'm not wiping off the gray, I just want it chiseled so I can put in the little arms for the mirrors. Just gonna tap those in. Make sure your brush is nice and chiseled. All right, I'm gonna use a quarter inch wash brush and just tap in 
those little gray circles for headlights. Let's get you a close up. There we go. Just tap those in. You can play with them after you've got the base coat. And that should be pretty good. And don't worry about it being too round because you still have to do the color of the truck, which will take some touching up anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the mirrors and do exactly the same thing and a little smaller. Now, once I've got these gray circles in, I'm gonna come in with a little black on the bottom here. And it's not a clean brush, just inching that in and rubbing with my finger just to give it a little shadow on both sides. And then just finish her up. Okay, good. Okay, so let's start now on the old pumpkin area. I'm gonna start with leaves and grab a little bit of the brown and a little bit of the yellow. And I'm just gonna inch in a little shadow towards the bottom of each leaf. And for that top one, you can do kind of the middle of it and then just go back to doing the bottoms of the others. And I might actually start to add a little more and get kind of a crinkly edge there. Yeah, that's kind of fun. So I'm using a little bit more paint in order to achieve that, but I'm just shimmying across, just shimmying a little bit. All right, now I wanna grab a little bit of yellow ochre and add that to the tops of the leaves and especially that high one, I'm gonna add it to both sides. And then in the tops of both. And I like a wavy edge on my leaves, but you can make them nice and tight if you want to. Good, and then take that chiseled edge and just throw a line right down that middle. Make sure they attach. All right, beautiful. And I'm just using the back of the brush because sometimes I have enough paint and it's still wet. You can make a little line, it's kind of cute. Now there's also a little tiny leaf down here. I always forget about it. And you can throw other leaves too, just have some fun. So I'm gonna grab a lot of orange, a lot of orange and a little bit of brown. Pop in the back side of the pumpkin there, those little haunches. And I want them just a little, a little darker. And I'm going down the, the crevices of the pumpkin in between the sections. And I like to get dark in first. Little bits of dark there. So still using orange and you can add a little of that yellow ochre to lighten it up. So in the crevice, you want it dark. And on the edge of the crevice, right before it gets really dark, you want it nice and light. That's one way. I do have other ways of doing pumpkins, but some people find section by section to be really helpful. Okay, so I'm going dark. and then light on the edge. It's pretty cute. I love pumpkins, they're so great. Ah, they're so pleasing. All right, and I'm just moving in. That should really be dark, so I might darken that in a little bit, but. Okay, now I wanna pop in a stem. 
don't worry too much about everything being perfect. You're getting base coats on, and if you like them in the end, great. If not, we change them. So a little brown, a little green, and he's a cute little guy. And I'm going to do the stem here too. Nice and green, a little bit of brown. And then we'll start on this, this next little guy. And I just added a touch of white and pulled just one swoop to do a little highlight. And you can do this at the end, or you can do it now. Okay, now if there's not too much paint, you can wipe off your brush, grab some yellow ochre, and just do one or two swipes just to get some good color in there. Just pop it up, but don't go over those strokes because it'll blend for sure. And then the very top of them, they should be lighter, but if it's not, that's okay. Just give it a little roundness. They're normally kind of pokey. And it's just literally add white or yellow uh, ochre to whatever you had on your brush in order to do that. Ooh, put a touch of black in there. Look at that depth. <laughs> I like it. Just pull it up. Soften with your finger. If it works, great. If not, we can always add a little more detail later. So mine are, mine are fairly dry, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little touch of white for a highlight. And don't, don't go over those strokes. If you go over the strokes, they'll just blend away. So just add one or two and call it pretty okay. Okay, I'm going to take my yellow ochre and start on my next pumpkin. I'll just throw in a big section of yellow ochre. My brush is still a little dirty, so I might wipe it off, but just come on back. And I'm just going to Throw it in there. And in this one, I'm gonna get everything kind of as I go. So that was kind of a bright orange, but I do like it. That's fine. A little bit of brown, just to add a little shadow. And if you work quickly enough, there's a good amount of wet paint. So you can give it a nice solid color. And that's so cute. All right, so let's move that on in. So remember, crevices are dark. I'm just adding white. Crevices are dark, and the really round part of each section is light. And you can kind of get lost in pumpkins because they're really simple, so we tend to overdo it. But when in doubt, take the fat part of the pumpkin and add a highlight, and in the crevice, See what I mean? Just starting to go too far now. That's okay. Oh, I like that line though. Soften that. How many sections do I have in this pumpkin? <laughs> anyway. And I'm still just using yellow ochre and the burnt sienna, which is the brown color. Actually, kind of like that. Same colors as the leaf, but 
Need to add a little something different there. And this is just a little orange to give it a little more pizzazz. And if you end up working a little slower, that's fine. You can always wet a brush and soften with a damp brush, just no water on the canvas. All right, so I'm using a little olive green on this guy. And again, the crevices should be dark. It's just such a fun shape to make. Gotta darken the darken the nooks and crannies. And you can see really all you need is just a little bit. You need that base color, a little shadow and a little highlight, and that's all you need. This one I'm gonna make a little brighter, kind of a reddish. So I've still got all the other colors on my brush. I'm just adding in And it's getting a little muddy from all the other colors, but I really like those earth tones. It's just the just a cool time of year for them. And I'm adding a little white to give some of my sections a nice highlight. Super fun. So I somehow ended up with a white, looks like a thumb sticking out in the middle of my pumpkins. <laughs> and that's okay. There we go. We'll just make it dark. Okay, so my greens had time to sit just a little bit. So I'm popping a little of whatever's on my brush plus some white, just to give those sections a little bump. Okay, now give your eyeballs a break and come back to the pumpkins later. You can always highlight if you want to. Highlight, highlight later, but let them dry. Wash off your brush. I'm gonna take my half inch wash brush. You can use your inch, but I think this one yeah, uh, decide which one you like better. And I'm gonna use the lightest red that I've given you and I'm gonna start filling in my truck. Let's see if I can get you a little close up here. Okay, so I'm filling in this top part of the truck. Move your canvas if you need to. It's starting to get a little tiny bit awkward for me, so. I shift it around as I need to. Just clean up any messes right away. You can use a baby wipe for that too. And remember to use your chisel brush and get the paint on in there. Turn it upside down if you need to. Move that on in. And again, just put it flat on the table if that works better for you. Okay, we're going to do this top section, kind of the V in the middle of the truck there, all the way up with that same bright red lake color. It's 
the super bright one. Okay, now you're gonna go into your crimson color, the darker red. Um, you could add black, but I like this crimson color. It's kind of fun. Um, and I'm going to go right in the old nooks and crannies again. <laughs> so you can soften with your finger um, if you want to. Just give a swoop across the top. So there we go. I just don't want any clumpies on there. Okay, wipe off that crimson and grab more red, that bright, beautiful red lake. Pop it in these next little sections. Let the first section dry. Perfect. Good, good. Pop that in a little bit more. Remember, if your brush gets too much paint, you don't want to dab, you want to swipe and sweep. Keep that beautiful, sharp edge. So I'm going to make a tiny bit of pink with the white and just come in right in the middle there and highlight. I like doing it wet on wet, but you can also wait. I just like how it blends. And I'll add another, I'll add another highlight when it's dry. This gives me an opportunity to just make a nice subtle highlight. And then this is going to be a pretty light part as well because it's sticking out the most. So I'm using that light pink that I just made. And then I'll go into the bright or uh, light red. There we go. And finish off the rest of it. So I hope you're starting to see that highlight and shadow. So you always have a base color. You always have a darker color that we use as shadow. And then you always add white or yellow and white to highlight. It just depends. We don't want yellow and white in this case, but just shimmy it in there. Ooh, it's so satisfying. It's so cute. It's coming alive. Okay, so I'm using some of that dark crimson again just to give it a little, a little more drama. Drama in your painting is good. Nowhere else it belongs in the painting. Okay, so I'm wiping that off and I'm going to grab a little more of that red and a touch of white and I'm going to pop that highlight on. Is that a fender? I think that's a fender. If it's not a fender, I hope I didn't offend someone. <laughs> Sorry. I have issues. That's cool. But same thing, popping in that pink and then we will soften and bring it all the way down with the bright red. Okay. Looking good. Okay, and pop in that dark crimson again to give it a little shadow. And that should be really nice and in that little crevice there. Oh man, it's looking good. Looking good! Oh, we're almost there. A few more steps. Okay. Little bright pink. I'm going to hit the top of the truck. And right above. Yep. Just add some highlights where you think the light will catch it. And don't worry, it doesn't look like a pink truck in the end. Ooh, that's nice, I like that one. Let's do that again. 
Okay, so tap in a little bit right in the middle on the nose. Well, a little more than, oh, a little more than that. That's okay. It's kind of fun, actually. I like it. Great. So I'm going to use a slightly different brush, maybe just with white. And you can use the same brush and wash it, or you can... I just want my windshield a little brighter. Okay, I'm grabbing that same, same one. Now I am using the smaller brush and I'm just gonna provide a little, a little highlight and a little shadow. And really, it doesn't matter where you do that. I like to go kind of around the edges and make it slightly darker. Give a little dot in the middle maybe and give highlight kind of on that inner circle. And that usually works pretty well. And a little highlight where we were doing the tires. A little highlight on the tires there. So good, okay. Let's do the second one. I'm just going to add a little bit of dark on the outside there. And it's not black. It's, it's just the black mixed with gray or white, whatever you've got on there. And a little dot. And then come in with a little bit and fix your tire when you're done and you're happy with your headlight. Okay, and just a highlight of white on the mirrors and maybe a few streaks of bright white now that that's had time to sit a little bit not too much I want it choppy okay good all right and a little touch on the wheel again that little highlight and you can fix it I've got a little gray going on here a little gray or a little white both look great And touch up whatever you need to there. All right, that is looking fine. Woo! All right, so we're gonna grab our one inch wash brush and I want a nice clean chisel on it. Um, so wash it up, pat it dry. We're going to reorient the canvas so that my arm can swing the way it works for me. Now I'm left-handed, so this is the way that it works for me, but for you, most of you are going to be right-handed. Switch it the other direction. And see that chisel on the brush? Grab the gray and move it right along that line. Now it helps a ton if your elbow can sit on the table and just let your arm swing. So move. I'm going to do this. Actually, that just really helps me to move it in. Okay. And grab a little bit of white or bright gray. I like white because it's just, now that you have that gray coat, look how pretty that little highlight is. Okay. That's going back up. And I've got my arm braced against the table and my other hand. I am obviously not too worried whether or not these lines are perfect. Just keep that beautiful chisel in your brush. And you can see my brush is actually starting to get a little thick. And that's okay. So I'm doing predominantly gray, but I have a lot of white. It's just so fun. Just pull it down. And this beautiful, slightly rickety grill. And it's easy to clean up the bumper. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just taking white, slipping it right over any of that overshot. 
any of that paint that got onto the bumper and brightening up. Yep. Good. And just any little, little fun touches, maybe a little highlight on the bottom side or on the windshield. That's so much fun. And just see what you think it needs. I love it. I think he's so cute. Do we need anything else? I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. All right, maybe a little hit of red. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, that's right. I want to do, yeah. It's so funny. Always have a baby wipe handy just in case because these little swoops and these little ideas sometimes work and sometimes they don't. So if you do one, decide within seconds if you love it. Otherwise, take a baby wipe or damp paper towel and wipe it out of your memory. Oh man, that's fun. I love the swoopies. If you're getting clumpies instead of a nice flowy paint, um, bring a touch of water to your palette and pull straight out about a dozen times from the edge. Don't let it get drippy on your canvas because you will be sad. So look at your painting and just see what else you need. And I think we're in great shape. Okay, I, I want to add another leaf. I can't help it. This is called pushing it, my friends. <laughs> oh, but it's a cute one. It kind of looks like a bird. It's a leaf, but it kind of looks like a bird. A little, a little something crazy there. Oh, I love the leaves. I don't know. I just feel like it sort of brings it together. And they're basically giant teardrops. That's kind of the shape. An almond, you know, shape works really well. A football shape works really well. That's pretty cute. Maybe one or two more loop de loos. Woohoo! And our pumpkin truck is done. Thank you so much. Let me know how it came out. Until next time.